All righty. We have Mr. Antonio in the building. Yo, yo. What's good? <laughs> Not a whole lot, man. I haven't seen you for how long? Uh, it's been probably eight, nine months. Yeah. How did we meet? We met bartending together at Sonoma Wine Garden in Santa Monica. And this dude it was probably the most entertaining bartender <laughs> I've ever met. Uh, he later told me he was a comedian. I'm like, oh, this all makes sense now. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I remember the first time, or I think it was the second month that we started bartending. Oh, I'm getting comfortable now. I see, your, <laughs> see your feet all out. I'm getting my feet all out. And I got some pretty feet, except uh, I was wearing black socks, so we got uh, lint. Oh, we're good. Okay. All the pretty feet are out. And so Antonio, uh, he was bartending, and it was crazy at the time. And uh, he, wouldn't you say that you made a lot of tips off just like being a great entertainer as, as well as a bartender mm-hmm. at, at the bar, this dude gets on one knee and proposes to this <laughs> random girl and, and there's, there's like a crowd going around and he like literally, what was, it was an actual ring, right? It was like some plastic <laughs> some ring, like plastic ring. Uh, there was a bridal shower out on uh, the garden area, the outdoor area. Uh huh. And. I was like, oh, you guys have all these, they had all these like rings. I was like, can I get one? I'm going to propose to this beautiful girl at the bar. They're like, wait, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm absolutely in love with her. So then a crowd, I think a crowd from like their group came. It was at least 15, 20 people. Yeah, like, they it was were all recording. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, all these people are on the bar like recording. And I go up to like these girls that uh, were sitting at our bar uh-huh. and I wouldn't propose. They kept making fun of me because I kept going. I was, I was pretty buzzed and I kept going, that's what's up. Right? <laughs> So they kept going, that's what's up. And uh, I was like, oh, I'll propose one of them. I was trying to get them to go to my comedy show that night. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Remember? And uh, so I proposed, and we ended up running into them walking to get tacos after. But, yeah, she said yes and She everything. said yes, but she got absolutely mad because this dude is married and had a ring on his <laughs> finger. <laughs> she was like, what's that on She's your like, finger? I was, like, I was like, I already got our ring, you know? And she was like, you're fucking married. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, so um, you are a comedian. You are a. Would you consider yourself an actor? I yeah, definitely. Okay. I consider myself an actor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so did you move to LA for comedy and acting? Um, funny story. I did not move to LA. Um, I was born in Alaska, but I moved Alaska. Here. Yeah, when was, did you move here? When I was like four. Okay. Have you been to Alaska since? I have once. Okay. And I go to Montana. I go to Idaho a lot. Um. I go to Alaska. I went fishing the one time I went there, and I'm vegan. But uh, if I fish and hunt my own meat, I'm eating it. Yeah, you know? for sure. And uh, moved here. And growing up, I was I've always been the class clown, mm-hmm. but I had my shit together. Like I had all my work together. I never really lagged in school. Sure. Um, but so what does a class clown uh, like? What the characteristics of a class clown? Because when I think of that, I'm just like, oh, a really just like funny guy who likes attention. Is that That's exactly it? it. Okay. Um, I, I was a hoe for attention. Okay. Like basically a class clown. I would like honestly like. I think people uh, don't want to consider themselves hoes, but like I consider myself a hoe because I'm always looking for attention. Sure. At least that's how it was. Uh, you know, when you're not getting that attention at home, and you're not. Uh, you just you just need something and uh i felt like the biggest thing for me was i want to make everybody laugh i love mm-hmm. that positive attention you know yeah. i like i Does wasn't it fuel like you up like wh- oh it got me going it yeah. was so euphoric it was so high. It was like every time like people would laugh at me in the class and the teacher would get mad i, I thought that was so funny <laughs> yeah. the teacher would get like you could see it in her like her face or his face and sure. they'd get all mad and boiled but mm-hmm. everybody's laughing and you could tell the teacher like wants to laugh yeah like the teachers entertain like sure I, i've had maybe only one or two teachers that probably really disliked me uh-huh. but other than that it was like the biggest love hate relationship. Like, cause all my teachers like loved me, but they hated me. Yeah. Cause I was like, I wasn't disrespectful. I was, I was disruptive. Yeah. You know, I would interrupt them and I would just do out, I would just do outrageous things, but I was never disrespectful to the teacher. You know, those kids that would be disruptive. Yeah. And then they would just have mad disrespect to the teacher. Yeah. You were and never that. I was never that. That's I was awesome. never, I just, I, I didn't see the point. Cause sure. I, I, I understood what I was doing. Uh huh. 
And I was like, okay, like I'm already doing something I'm not supposed to yeah, be doing. Yeah, you were pretty self aware of it, and yeah, I was like, why do I have to make this person's life miserable? Mm. Like, you know, I am aware, like that this is a teacher, like, like they're here on their time, like yeah. giving us information, uh-huh. like for us to succeed, whether or not it's, you yeah. know. So you like that attention? When did you decide that, like, oh, like I might want to be a comedian? I want to, I w- would want to, like, possibly make a living out of this. Like, when did you decide that? Um. I think after I, okay, so when I was in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people don't, right? Yes, yeah, so like senior year of high school, I was like, mm-hmm. I want to be a UFC fighter. And then I was like, no, I don't want to be a UFC fighter. Because <laughs> I was like watching a lot of UFC fights, you know, that does not look interesting. Yeah, get your couple brain cells. Yeah, I was, I was, I was into wrestling <laughs> sure. and I, I was taking Muay Thai classes and all that. So I was like, oh, and then I was like, no, like just looking into it i was like that's not for me mm. and then i was like anesthesiologist and i was like no fuck that i don't want to go to school for 12 <laughs> more years like i want to be a class clown again for 12 years like no way yeah so, and who wants to trust me with their life like that mm-hmm. you know like i wouldn't and then uh so all my friends throughout high school like dude you need to get into acting you need to be a stand-up comedian you're so funny like it's what you were meant for and um growing up i always had this big thing um like about being embarrassed about being an actor or doing anything in the entertainment industry because of my father and the relationship my father and I had and how he felt about it because because how I remember, did he, how did he feel about it he would just say th- I, mean, I don't want to put him on blast or anything sure, like that yeah. you know and I don't it's something I'd rather like say for like a stage so then it's like more of a joke sure than the truth you yeah. know what I mean but um he just made me feel it was more, I was I'll just say the word like like a fruit you know what mm-hmm. I mean like um I remember he made fun of me because my freshman year of high school, I got into play production and Mm -hmm. beginner's drama because I was like, oh, like, you know, this is what I want to do. I was like, I kind of knew it. Yeah. But I was embarrassed. And uh, he started making fun of me for it. Mm. And that's when I was like, oh, like, why can't I like do something like creative and athletic at the same time? Sure. You know, and uh, so I think that turned me off from entertainment entertainment at all and how how old were you around that time 15 okay so i was 15 at that time before that i never did anything like entertainment wise i was like always into sports of some kind okay so when did you like re like get Mm. back into it i uh i was 19 and i was uh i was really into drugs and i was like i had no idea what i wanted to do at this Mm -hmm. point like you know now now my whole life shifted i was i got kicked out you know like I was sleep. I was like house hopping and I would sleep in my car and I was working, I was working a busing. I was busing at Buca de Beppo in studio city sure. and uh, I overdosed. And when I overdosed and I woke up, I'm like, what, what do I want to do? Like, I'm not going to do this again. So I get home from the hospital. I flush all my, I flush all my pills down like the toilet and I'm like trying to get like my head straight and everything together and my fr- I called my friend Tyler. I told him what happened. He said, bro, like, he's like, you're funny. Just hop on a stage. You're fucking funny. He's like, you know, he's like, you write. He's like, you write. Because I, I was staying at his house sometimes, too. Sure. He lived in uh, Burbank. He lived, like, on the hills in Burbank. Yeah. And he's like, bro, like, he's like, you get come home and get wasted and you just write he's like well, well, well he's like tomorrow let's go to flappers it's like this like sea level yeah. comedy club uh in burbank we go to flappers and uh i was 19 i was 19 or 20 mm-hmm. and i do my first my first set and i did well yeah right yeah i did usually well. people like what's it called uh not blow what's it called they choke or they bomb bomb so yeah. that's what comedians call like messing up like pretty badly they bomb on stage right usually like the first few are like bombs yeah so yours wasn't that it was not a bomb i actually did i did really well because Mm. i have i have this confidence Mm -hmm. and i i I learned that doing comedy for a while is it's about the confidence and the energy you bring to the stage sure and sometimes you know i know i'm not going to write the most create like the most intelligent jokes i know that yeah um but I know I'm gonna. I can bring what most people can't bring, and that's confidence and attitude and just a liveliness about myself. Yeah, you know. So I brought that, like this young raw version of me. I brought that to my first uh, open mic. Have you always been like that? Just because, like, for me, like observing you as like a friend of mine, and uh, for the 
past, like, I guess a year and a half or two years I've known you, those are the characteristics that I would describe you like exactly. Yeah. I've always for sure been like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's the me when I leave my door, Mm -hmm. you know, I think it's a different me when I'm home, when I'm home, it's, uh, you know, and I don't mean to change the mood, but I'm a little more like, like dark Mm. and it's it's weird, but that's what gets, that's what drives me to be creative and wants me to be so bright when I leave the house, you know, and, uh, back to performing at flappers for the first time. So I performed at flappers. I did really well. Second time I did well. Third so time so I did you, well. you, you, you didn't just like stop. You kept doing it. You're I like, I love it. this. I, I loved it. Right. So that was like, your epiphany. You overdosed mm-hmm. and you're like, oh shit. I, uh, your buddy convinced you to do comedy and you're like, this is it. This that, is exactly okay. until this. So fourth time I go to this place called Burbank Bar and Grill. The Burbank uh, comedy festival was going on. So flappers was closed for open mics. Okay. And I go upstairs and, uh, I had my joke book on the stool. I was like, oh, I got some new stuff I want to do. I didn't know how to write jokes yet. Yeah, I didn't even know there was such thing as like set a punchline, set a punchline. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, I get on stage and uh, I choked, right? I'm on stage. I'm all, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. So you just didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I stood you there. You just kept and looked. I just looked and I went, I went, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say. And someone in the audience goes, your jokes are right there. <laughs> you know, I, was like, I was like, Oh man. So I, I grabbed my notebook, dude. And I ran and I haven't. And then after that, I did so not, you, you, you didn't say I anything. Didn't, I didn't say anything. How did I, that feel? Describe that feeling. It left me, dude, I was shitting bricks. Like, <laughs> like I was so scared. I didn't do comedy for, I didn't attempt comedy for four or five years after that. No way. Yeah. So like when you met me, I may have been, uh, a year and a half, two years into doing comedy again. After that, yeah, after okay. that. Okay. So after that, I was so scared. Wow. I didn't want to do comedy again. So that's when I went to like acting. Like I looked into acting schools. Uh-huh. So I got into acting after that, and acting was like I loved it, and I didn't have that feeling like of like that. It wasn't like the same pressure, mm-hmm. um, and I don't know what like drove me to that moment, like deer in the headlight moment. I don't know if it was because I might've been like, I might've been sober or I'm a, I might've been on something. Mm-hmm. I don't like remember exactly, but damn dude, it hit me hard. <laughs> it scared me, you know? Yeah. So why did you decide to just do acting school after not wanting to pursue comedy again? Why didn't you just like, Oh, I'm going to try comedy again. Uh, at the time I wasn't a very, uh, I wasn't a very driven person Mm -hmm. and I wasn't reading like I am now. Uh, It was, it wasn't into, I was into um, acting school where I start reading. uh, I read rich dad, poor dad was like the first self-help book I read. And then after that I read like think and grow rich. And then I read the, the, the 13 laws of success and all these other books that was like, okay, like don't do like, like do things you're scared to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And that's when I was after like a couple books in and after doing acting school for a while, after I completed acting school, I felt I was confident into going back into comedy. Mm -hmm. And I think that was because, so do you think those books like helped you to like build up the courage to, um, pursue comedy again? I think it gave me the courage to pursue anything again. Okay. Because, you know, I was, I've always had big dreams, but I wasn't always driven. Mm hmm. And those books just have always told me to just do, do what it. you, yeah, do it. If you believe it, you yeah. can do it and just work on it, yeah. you know? Because there's not a lot of, you're one of the only people who have the same like mindset that I do in a lot of ways in like, yo, what do you like to do? Do it and like, just do it until like you make it work. hundred percent. I was telling, I was telling my wife earlier and I was telling my wife when I actually met her because dude, I'm telling you, none of my peers ever inspire me none of my peers like i don't look up to any of them and i met you and it was the first time i had this feeling and at first i thought it was like an envious feeling and i was like I, you know i was like I, I, I don't get jealous of people sure you know i was like i was like i'm not envious of him i was, I was like i was like damn he's just a, a cool solid dude i was like you know he does what he wants 
Yeah. He's not, you know, you're unapologetic for mm-hmm. how you feel. You, like you just have this like really cool, confident attitude. And then when you told me you were going full throttle for your bitters company, mm-hmm. I was like, that's, that's the guy right there. And you just, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you, what you, uh, the way you inspired me is you just always seem to have all your shit together. You're always so organized. Like you follow your schedule. You are on top of things. And I'm like, mm. You know, this, this is a guy I want to hang out with sure, because like, I appreciate that. you know, like people I've always hung out with slackers mm-hmm. and I'm like trying to veer off from that. And yeah. I want to hang out with like better people. And, you know, mm-hmm. you post that, like hang out people better than you and stuff like that. And when I met you, I was like, damn, it was like someone finally inspiring me because, mm-hmm. you know, working that, in bars and restaurants, yeah. everyone's like, Antonio, you're so inspiring. Like, how do you, why do you work so hard? You know, cause I was out there, bro. Like I'm doing a open mic seven nights a week yeah and you you're like a night owl too like you would like right after bartending you would go to the comedy store Mm -hmm. and just go 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 and like i felt the same way about you and i was like wow this dude's really trying to uh make it in the industry he wants to make it in and that's super inspiring and like your bartending you're doing right now you're working at a place doing christmas tree shit just to live here just to like uh keep continuing what you want to do and like there's not a lot of people who would do that. There's a lot of people who move home who uh, are like, okay, I tried it. I, 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 I gave it my go and that's it. I'm done. I'm going to get uh, a job that I don't enjoy anymore. With benefits. With benefits. It's safe. And I, I just don't want, I don't want that. I feel like. I don't it, want the confrontation yeah, with my parents anymore. It, yeah. You know, all that stuff. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I got like, you know, I got my degree. I should do this probably. Mm-hmm. And they're afraid to really go after their dreams and uh i never thought i would say this to you nate but you said the word try to pursue and i'm not trying bro i'm doing it you yeah no I mean? for sure <laughs> like <laughs> i'm gonna do it and i know yeah. you're gonna do it mm-hmm. and that's the that's the attitude we have um what do you call it okay so let's let's go into uh bartending because uh you i don't know if you trained me did you train me one day i tr- I, I probably did but i'm very more like i'm i'm observant and i'm just like yeah this is how i would do it uh-huh um because I feel like anyone can learn from anybody. Right? 100%. And so one of the best things that I learned from you, just bartending wise, is uh, mixing with a spoon properly. Like mm-hmm. with, and uh, just like your technique and also like your shake is pretty good. Like y- you can move, bro. You're like a dancer. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so <I'm> like, <laughs> Antonio's got rhythm. <laughs> I do. And it's not just in my arms. It's everywhere. <laughs> so I learned like uh a few bartending i wouldn't say tech i would say techniques Mm -hmm. and i even use them like a lot today you know and and that was super cool and that was only like the first couple weeks i met you and uh then we went to go uh what's that place in santa monica by the beach that we went with al Ooh, uh big dave's or something yeah big dave's bar big dean's or something Something like like that and i was like hey man we should go get a beer or vice versa i don't know who said it and um and then we got like drunk relatively quickly yeah it's like these big beers like this big i don't know how big they were like we went, 16 20 ounces or something we like went that. to go drink a beer with a guy who couldn't drink beer yeah and then <laughs> uh, and, and then he left like right away and me and antonio were the last people there i don't know when this was like pre-covid it was pre-covid it was probably like two Feb- weeks dude before yeah and uh we got super deep and i was like yo i really fuck with this dude because we were talking a lot about things like just like pursuing things that you want to do and because the timeline is short man you mm-hmm. know it is yeah and that's a that's a big thing i see especially with like people i care about um you you meet as, when you're an adult and you work in like the service industry you meet people of all ages mm-hmm. and from all over the world especially in la when you say a hundred percent in la and sometimes you care about some of these people mm-hmm. and you could see like you could see their talents and their creativity and but they're all missing just that belief in themselves and that yeah. drive and that passion and you know i've always like i've always liked like like it's not too late and they always say oh, it's too late it's too late like that's what, that's why, I th- that's why I swore myself I would never work in the service industry again. Was because when was that? When did you decide that? Oh, uh, I think when COVID hit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, like when I was like when I was like forced to leave Sonoma. I was I think I was already talking to you that I wanted to leave. Well, you. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. We uh, both. We. 
Yeah, you never came back. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I was like, no. I was like, no, I'm over that. I don't, I don't want that in my life. I'm like trying to figure out what I want to do now like and then how, do I it. Make money now, yeah. and do it, even though it's impossible to do it mm-hmm. kind of right now. Um, so what? Well, you're doing a couple things. So what are you doing right now? Like, cause you have a couple commercial gigs and. I've been doing a lot of voiceover work. So um, what's that? I don't really know what voiceover work is. Voiceover work is you have a home studio kind of like this, except mine's in my closet. Okay. I got eggshell. I eggshelled the whole thing. Like sound stuff. Soundproof okay. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, got a nice professional mic and, you know, you have a sound equipment and uh, I use this sound program called Audacity because it's free and I'm not working right now. Yeah. I'm not going to pay anything crazy, sure. you know, like I'll let the professionals edit it. Uh, yeah. As long as it. So you don't need up. to edit it. No. And so you just uh, record it. Exactly. Okay. And the way this works is you make what's called a voiceover demo reel. Okay. And you can make, there's probably up, up to 10 different kinds you can make, but you should only do what you think you can book. So I have a commercial one mm-hmm. and I have a voice animation one and a video game one. Okay, so explain what those are. So a video game one is obviously just like speaking over a video game. So video game, I would, I would play them on my phone right now too. Um, so the commercial one is I, I wrote my own commercials because you're not supposed to use, you know, you, they want you to be original. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, and it's illegal to use other commercials. Sure. So I wrote out a couple commercials that I think I would sound good on. So I wrote my own Chuck E. Cheese commercial, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my own Chuck E. Cheese commercial. I wrote a, uh, I wrote a dog flea collar commercial because mm-hmm. I, I was like, oh, I could probably book something like that. I wrote a Verizon commercial mm-hmm. and I wrote um, a Kaiser Permanente commercial. Okay. And I, basically I went on their websites and I just pulled stuff like like references I thought I would use, made a quick thing. It's 30 seconds long. Yeah. So it's like, it's really quick. Seven, it's really quick. And then the voice animation shows the range of my voice. Mm-hmm. So like I could talk normally and then I could talk like this or I can, like, I don't know, man. Yeah. Like I get nervous like doing it right now, but like, <laughs> and it's like, I have to like think about, but I can like do different, do, 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 different voices and I can change it up anytime I want to. And then I can do it. Yeah. Like an example, just like you show your range uh-huh. of your voices and the video game one, you would just, uh, very similar to the voice animation, mm-hmm. uh, just you, it's the background sound, mm-hmm. you just put video games. So like, oh, stuff like that. So are those, are those voices? No, no, no. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I go on to a, a sound, a sound website and I okay. just, I buy sounds Yeah. and you just add them. Okay. But I was like, get over here. Da, da, da. Like, so like I do like a war video game. Okay. And then I do one where it's like, I like to do shooter games. Mm-hmm. So, cause that's what I play. So I do like ones where I think I'll, a cool like ad where I'm walking through a cave. So I got one where it's like a chip and it's like, and I, I do like two different voices mm-hmm. and you just basically it's just showing your range. And if you have good voice and speech, mm-hmm. so I warm up my voice and everything before like kind of like a singer techniques. Exactly. Okay. And, uh, you send in when there's a couple websites where you can find the work or if you have an agent, they send it in. Okay. And, uh, that's how you work. And that's how I was working in Montana and stuff, dude. I took all my sound equipment with you yeah i took it all with me okay and I, I, I would like record under like my sleeping bag i was so confused because uh we were messaging when you're in montana you're like oh i'm doing voiceover work and i was like in montana like how yeah. are you doing that <laughs> you could do, it. You could do it. Dude, I, was, I was literally sitting there like with a cigar under the blanket and i'd be uh, like doing my voiceover work and i would send it in yeah and it was super easy and i think i the reason i came back early was because i started booking commercials sure where i was like I would like stand in front of like, like flat colored walls and mm-hmm. I booked a commercial. I was like, ah, shit, time to go back to LA. Like, yeah. you know, this is over. Yeah. So it, I think that's good practice for like what you ultimately want to do, like comedy and acting and stuff, like just mm-hmm. learning all those sound uh, voiceovers and stuff. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, you, there, there are schools for it or you could just practice your range. Mm-hmm. No one knows your voice better than you do. Yeah. Um, that's where I feel like the acting school helped me so much in comedy was because when I'm on stage, my favorite things are to do like impressions, make fun of audience members, yeah. 
um, and to do like act outs. So what's the biggest thing in an acting school that what teaches you? Because like, uh, I, I'm not an actor. I don't know. Like objectively, I'm just like, why don't you just like learn the script, feel the emotion and do it? Like, what's the purpose of a whole acting school? Um, would you build a house without the foundation? No. That's for me. That's what acting school is. And it also. So I mean. That's what acting school is for me. I went to this two-year program. It was it was incredible, but for me, it was more of a foundation because mm-hmm. there are what's people. There is such thing as call um, overacting. You know, mm-hmm. you see people overacting all the time. Oh, you're right. For and sure, it, it's ridiculous. I, I can't really describe it, but you just know. No, a hundred percent. And that's what you just said is what I do. I memorize a script mm-hmm. and I live through it. I don't. There's. I don't like set a bunch of things and mm-hmm. all that you know i, I do when I'm, when I'm on a professional set i know my marks mm-hmm. i know my actions but i don't know how i'm gonna live through that in that moment of time yeah and uh that's what i feel i feel like people but the world is full of overthinkers mm-hmm. people overthink and they don't just do yeah and i think that's the biggest problem with people that do acting not so much comedy. Comedy is so free. Like mm-hmm. there's like no real way. Like comedy school is horseshit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I think I went to I went to a, I went to a stand up school, and I think that it fucked me up for a while because I was like, oh, I have to be on my script and I have to be like this, mm. and it didn't allow me to be free on stage. And there's sure. nothing more fun than watching someone be free on stage. Like, yeah, know your jokes, know like you know what I mean. Know your topics, yeah. know your punchlines, but you don't have to be on script. Where as acting, you do, but that's funny because like you like both things, but they're totally different. You 100%. just you describe one as free and one is like pretty rigid and in except like in it's terms free of free in the sense of it's it's free in your emotions. You have to allow yourself to be free in that um, in the script. Okay, you but, know, but the script itself is you can't really like it's it's they're both ultimately storytelling, mm-hmm. right? At the end of the day, like a good comedian is telling you a story. Mm-hmm. And a good actor is telling you someone else's story. Yeah. So they're both free, just differently. Because mm-hmm. like stand up. Which one do you enjoy more? Ooh, man. It just. Uh, or you, you don't need to choose. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> sitting there thinking. I think it just depends on the season, bro. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know. I I go, I go back and forth. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's it's hard to juggle the two. Yeah. Because stand up is such a night lifestyle. Yeah. And acting is a very like. When you're acting, it's so different. Like, dude, no one gives a shit if you're taking care of yourself and you're doing stand up comedy. Yeah. You know, you could be out of shape. You could be fat. Mm-hmm. You could do drugs. No one gives a shit because ultimately that's all funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there's also a lot of actors that like, they like they that's their part. Like they are the fat guy. They are the, yeah. that, that people go to for that type. That's of part, true. Right. No, very true. Right. Yeah. But it depends on, uh, it cracks me up. So there was this, uh, interview of, uh, Brad Pitt mm-hmm. and Jonah Hill. Cause they did a movie I was just together. <laughs> <right? laughs> like, I was just thinking about Jonah Hill in my head when I was explaining. Right? That. So it's like you're thinking about like Jonah Hill, Jonah Hill, the big funny guy. Yeah. The yeah. fat funny guy, but like who takes him seriously? Yeah. Nobody, right? Brad Pitt's a serious actor. People take him seriously. Okay. And then Brad Pitt said it in front of Jonah Hill. He said something like, they were talking, like, would you compare yourself something to Jonah Hill? He said, please only compare me to serious actors. I Really? Dead ass, dude. Dead serious. Was he kidding? or was No, he, he was being, like, so serious. And Jonah Hill's face was like, and there's, like there, there's, like, this video. I'll, I'll pull it up, dude. It's so funny. It's a video of... Just people bashing on Jonah Hill for not being a serious actor. Wow, it's 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 sad, but it's like that's that's a career you uh, built for yourself, and it doesn't matter. Like at the end of the day, does it really matter? Like no, look he, at Jonah Hill's yeah, lifestyle. Like yeah. look how he's living. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like it doesn't matter. It's just uh. Well, do you think he's not a serious actor? I mean, I to get to that level, and whether if you want to be a dramatic actor. You want to be the comedian actor or like mm-hmm. Seth Rogen, the weed actor or whatever. Yeah. I think it takes a certain level of hard work and dedication Okay. to get there. So I think he's, I think he's a serious comedian. I don't think maybe like, I, 
I don't know if he has he done a serious role. I have no clue. I don't think so. And so like like maybe Twenty One Jump Street, <laughs> like something like that. You know, like Twenty Jump Street is probably his most serious role. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't consider him like a serious dramatic actor. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not going to compare Jonah Hill to Meryl Streep. Yeah. Or to Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you study actors? I do. Okay. Um. What What's uh, one of the actors that you study the most? I, re- I study Robert Downey Jr. a lot because okay. I think he's I think he's brilliant because what stuck with me in acting school is acting is reacting. Explain that. So well, main, a lot of times people are will be on camera and they're just sitting there looking stupid like, you know, we're acting and they're waiting. They're waiting for their line to come up so yeah. that they're blank. Sure. But when you're talking to someone in real life, yeah. there's always something going on. You're reacting to something every second. Mm-hmm. So when I say acting is reacting, like when you're telling me your lines or you're feeding, you know, you're feeding me your lines or whatnot. Yeah. I should constantly be reacting to stuff, whether it's something you're saying or something that's distracting me or like the environment in the room or the environment of wherever we are. Okay. You know, some people, some people will do a scene and they're just sitting there like this and they're locked in, which it's not interesting, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and I think like, you know, people don't people when they act, they're uh, they're playing their truth 100 percent of the time. And it's not interesting because in real life, you're masking things. Yeah. You know, like when you're going through something in your life and you go to work, mm-hmm. are you going to work and you're all upset and you're like, hey, how are you today? Well, Can like I make it. you a drink? You hide it. And so and there might be that, that one little thing. Let's say let's say something. Let's just say, for example, something happened to your dog and you're sad about that right Mm -hmm. you're at work and you're fine you're masking it all day until that one person comes in and starts talking about their dog and all this and you can't hold it in anymore yeah that's the interesting part of acting and that's how most scenes are written and that's how most writers will write a scene out Mm. is they'll they'll write it it's like mask 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 you should never show your truth it's not interesting humans don't live that way in real life yeah you know, we're always masking everything. So would you say the best actors are those who like portray real life properly? A hundred percent. The ones yeah. that just live through things truthfully. Yeah. You know, and that's, I, I did the, I took this technique called Meisner technique. There's different acting techniques. Say that again? Meisner technique. Meisner, okay. And basically it was just living, living uh, through like false things. Mm-hmm. So whatever's going on in your scene is not real, but you're making it true. Mm-hmm. And it was nothing crazy that you have those people that, um, what's it called? Uh, I worked on someone on this last movie I did. Uh, (laughs) it's when they're, they're a character the whole time. They don't break character. Uh, Daniel Day Lewis is this type of person. Jim Carrey does it too. It's, uh, oh man, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'll never get it. Uh, Yeah. So they, they're that character the whole Whole time. time. And it's, it's, to me, I'm like, yo, this is really unprofessional. Like, if I was running a set, because, mm-hmm. like, one day I want to get into directing yeah. after I have an established acting, acting career, career. And I'm yeah. like, you know, like, I want to get into directing and producing one day. That's, that's I, I think I'd be good at it. Yeah. But I don't think I would ever hire that kind of actor. Is that annoying? It's like, hella unprofessional. So we're doing a scene, right? And we're filming in Koreatown. Okay. And, uh, you know, Koreatown's like, not... Like, they are the same actor offset. They're just, like... Being they're their character the, the whole, whole time. time. Yeah, they're their character the how's whole that, time. How's that unprofessional? Um, I'll explain to you in certain situations. So we were in Koreatown filming. Uh-huh. Koreatown's not the nicest area, okay. right? And like, not to like be mean, but this is just how things are and how things look, right? Mm-hmm. So the scene was, it was, it, dude, it's so fucking funny just like looking from it outside. It's Objectively, just, yeah. it's so funny. So the scene, it was a, it was a Western and, uh, the, the girl is the bad guy. The guy is the good guy. Okay. And, so, but the, so the, the girl's, the girl's white, the dude's black, okay. right? He has a gun in his hand. They're filming the scene inside. She runs out. We're filming at this like old school looking house that looks like a Western, like 1800 house or whatever. Yeah. She runs out of the house. Director yells cut. He runs out the house chasing her and he's running streets over blocks over like if he's still chasing her, but he's running and he yells cut, but he doesn't stop. And he's in career town, 
with a gun in his hand. It's a prop gun, but it <laughs> looks like a real gun. So it does not look good. You know what I mean? It doesn't look good at all. So then you got like people running. Wait, did he like not hear? No, he heard. That's a thing. No, that's a thing. It's called method acting. It just came to my head. It's called method acting. So, that's crazy. No, it's it's nuts, dude. Fucking if you if you if you call him by his real name, he won't respond. They're not responding to. Oh my to god. You. <laughs> so that's, that's how it is. Crazy. That's what I mean. Like, okay, Shia LaBeouf uh-huh. is a method actor, and like, so there was this interview. I'm bringing up Brad Pitt again, and Brad Pitt was talking about doing um, that war movie they did uh, back in 2000. 15 they did some uh, movie together hmm. Shia LaBeouf didn't shower the whole time because the the soldiers didn't shower so he was like he's like being on set with him was awful because he smelled so bad and like anything he, he did he really did and they're filming this new movie and he got his whole body tattooed like legit Be- like legit because the characters tattooed and I don't know if you saw it it was it, it was blowing it. up it was blowing <laughs> Dude, it was blowing up on Instagram. It was a video of Shia LaBeouf doing a table read where you have like, you have Sean Penn, Jennifer Aniston. Oh yeah, I saw Brad it. Pitt. I, yeah, it got one viral a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. he's all smoking weed and stuff. Like put on his shirt. He's all, what? He's all like into it. Everyone's like professional. Yeah, except for. Except for Shia LaBeouf, right? Yeah. They're all wearing their home clothes. Yeah. <laughs> and Morgan Freeman's narrating and stuff, <laughs> dude. Like, and like, he's there just all in a character, like. Wherever the scene takes place, he's at. You know what I mean? No way. Yeah, and like that's what I mean. Like method acting, it's like there's no mm. like. <laughs> that's interesting. I I never knew that actors do that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I kind of get the concept in the sense that like, oh, like I'm actually gonna be this part. I'm gonna be the person. Yeah, I get it. You yeah, know? I I get it too. But like, like, whew. it's just it's heavy. Yeah, it is. You heavy, know, it's it's sure. hard. It's hard to be around. Like, uh, but when you say like that might be a definition of a true artist in some sense, because like a lot of, a lot of artists, uh, I would say like actually like painters, you look at like a lot of them that they're, they're pretty. Yeah. I never called, I never said that, that, uh, it wasn't a beautiful form of art. Sure. I just said it was unprofessional. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Like, oh, yeah, and yeah. Then like, I'm not, I'm not judging them though. It's, yeah. just, it's, it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard, hard to, to work with. Hard, hard for people to work with. Yeah. Like, I mean, have, did you watch the Netflix uh, documentary on Jim Carrey? No. Becoming Andy Kaufman? No. All right, watch it. Okay, and then we'll talk about it. And then we'll talk about it because it's Jim Carrey. Mm-hmm. He's a method actor too. Yeah. So whatever, you know, he... Do you know who Andy Kaufman is? No. Famous comedian. Okay. Guy was a pain in the ass though. Okay. And basically Jim Carrey was Andy Kaufman on set. For a movie? Yeah, for a movie. Okay. He, he did Andy Kaufman's movie and Andy Kaufman was a drug addict, uh, al- alcohol abuser. So they would find Jim Carrey on set blacked out drunk and they couldn't film that day. So he's costing production thousands and thousands of dollars, but like he, hundreds of but thousands Jim of Carrey dollars. But Jim Carrey did that only to... For the character because that's, that's what it. Andy Kaufman would have done. 100%. 100%. Not because he was drink, like, drunk or anything like no. that. No. Just for... Just because okay. that's who Andy Kaufman was. Yeah. So, you know, they'd find Jim Carrey on the back lot somewhere, all like this, passed out with a bottle of alcohol, like yeah. finished. Yeah. And like he'd miss like a day or two of production because of it. Damn. And it's wild. And like, like I said, I get it. You know, I do. You know, Daniel Day Lewis is. Yeah. He only takes one acting job every four years because he needs that time to prep for the character. Mm. So his wife was like, I don't live with my husband. I live with different characters. So when he did Lincoln, the movie Lincoln, uh-huh. it took him four. He, he was living as Abraham Lincoln for four years. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, like, could you imagine? Could you imagine <laughs> I that could too? not imagine. Like, I, I would. Yeah. Like, living, yeah, that's like, crazy. His wife slept with Abraham Lincoln, bro. Like, <laughs> she had period sex. Like, like not yeah. like not like period. Like, yeah. but like history. Like, yeah. it's a period piece. You no, know what for I mean? Sure. That's crazy. So, okay, so for um. Though acting and comedy is like kind of like on hold with COVID and everything, mm-hmm. what are you most excited for right now? Oh, man, see that's what breaks me. Is like I don't know what I'm. I'm excited for. Uh, shit, dude, I don't know. To be honest. <laughs> like, what am I excited for? Um, I'm doing a show uh, December seventeenth at this house. Comedy exci- show. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm excited, but I'm nervous because yeah. you haven't been on stage in a while, right? I, I went on. I did a show two weeks ago. Okay. 
I did uh, 15 minutes. I started off. That's a, that's pretty pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I minutes. I started off really strong, mm -hmm. and then like there was like this point where I just tanked. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it was my fault, and uh, I was mad. I mean, the show was so like the show was so unprofessionally ran. It was mm -hmm. this uh, it was this chick I met. I did like this like one time bartending gig, and this mm -hmm. chick. Uh, I ran into this chick. And she's like, oh, you should come to my comedy show tonight. I'm like throwing – she's like 40 years old into real estate, whatever. She's like, oh, I'm doing a comedy show tonight. You should come. Yeah. I was like, I was like oh, I'll think about it. For you sure. Know? And she's like, I'm just looking for one more comedian. And I was like, ooh, that's me, motherfucker. You know, so I told her, I was like, oh, I'm a comedian. She's like, oh, that's great. You're on the show. I was like, cool. Yeah. So I had no idea it'd be her hosting the show. Right, so I get there and she's hosting the show, dude. And I'm like, oh, what did I get myself into? Just like doing, just like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not too good to do a show, but I like, like things to be ran properly, properly. And she like, dude, she introduced me to the stage as the bartender, and it made me mad. You know, like, why didn't you make you mad? Because I wanted to, you know, I'm not there to look the part as the bartender mm -hmm. i'm there to just look the part as a stand-up comedian sure you know stand-up comedians aren't like these like professional dudes but still it's like i do comedy i'm a stand-up comedian just say my name call me to the stage let me do my time and let me get off the stage you yeah. know so the first like probably like the first two minutes of my set everyone was cracking up because i was making fun of her you know i was like i was like here i am like you know you guys expected a stand-up comedian but here's the bartender you know and i started making fun of her i was like it's like who who's like who introduces someone to the stage as the bartender and i was like just going off about mm -hmm. it for like a few minutes and people were like laughing and then i tried like a lot of my new jokes what you're doing well and then once i start getting into my older jokes is when i start tanking why is that because that's not who i am anymore mm. and i realized so why do you that. still do those jokes well i didn't realize that until then i was like wow uh -oh. like because i feel like you know i this whole COVID uh, quarantine and everything, it, it changes you. Mm, how so? I don't know if it made me more. Um, I stopped caring at one point of it. At one point of it, I just mm -hmm. let myself go. Mm. I was I was eating a lot. I was drinking. I got to 198. Oh, shit. And wait. I did not know that. You know, and like. <laughs> That's crazy. And I, I lost like, you know, and since then I've lost like 30 pounds. I'm at like 167 right now. Mm. But, uh, so I got, I, I, let, I let myself go and I wasn't excited. There's was no, I was, I went from going to comedy clubs seven days a week. Yeah. You went every night. So this dude, when we were bartending, he would always take like the lunch shift, which is like not that great of a shift compared to like a night shift. But he's like, yo, I, I got to do it because I, I, I'm chasing my dreams at night, man. I'm fucking, yeah. I'm going to be, uh, at a club every night. I was like, D fuck the money. Yeah. You know, it's not about the money. Yeah. Like right now, like why do I care about that extra hundred dollars I would make at night or the extra 200 I would make at night yeah. when it's like, this is going to give me that 10 million in like five years, two years, sure. you know, when, whenever it's my time, whenever yeah. my time comes, nobody knows their time. You set that date when you write your goals. Yeah. And whether it happens at that time or not. Yeah. You know, no one really knows their time. Do like, you set goals? I set goals like insane. Mm, I so? have. What's your process? Well, I usually start off. It depends. So sometimes I write daily goals, okay. right? And then I write my daily goals and then I write my weekly goals mm. and then I write monthly goals. And then for my monthly goals, I go, okay, what do I want to accomplish in a year? Yeah. So I'll write for, I usually write my daily goals for the week. Mm. You write this in a journal? You write it yeah, I have, I have a, I have I have like three different journals. Okay. I have like this little one that I use for my daily goals. Yeah. I use notes on my phone. laptop and my phone for yeah. like my long-term goals. Okay. My, my 10 year, my five year, my two year, my one year. Mm. And then I have another journal that's like weekly and monthly goals. Mm -hmm. And I, I set up my long-term goals and then I, that's when I write my like monthly ones. It's like, how do I get there? And then I write my daily ones. Like, how can I get there? Like if I don't accomplish this today, mm -hmm there's no way this can happen. Yeah. You know, and it, it, cause it usually doesn't. Cause if you don't do it today, you, you're not going to get it done tomorrow. It's just, just get it done. Yeah. And I think that's where I, I'm inspired by you is you mm. just, you just get it done. Uh, I don't know if, 
Uh, yes and no. Like uh, even with this podcast, even with uh, the company, I have this. So like I don't have notebooks. I don't write my goals in journals. I write them on a whiteboard and I put it in front of my bed. Me too. Every morning and I look at it and I'm like, it's either like, oh, you're doing decent. Oh, you piece of shit. This that's been on your whiteboard for so long. Oh, yeah. So I know I, that feeling. <laughs> so I woke up probably like a month and a half ago and I look at my, my whiteboard and it says launch podcast uh solve the rubik's cube and like another goal i forgot Uh and that's been on for over two and a half years and i was just like yo that's been on like oh get get it done this week and it goes by so much so quick and so like i i had just like a kick in the butt i was like you're gonna knock all these things out in this week how are you gonna do that so i was like what's the biggest thing in my head that i can uh motivate myself to get this shit done this week and i was like what are things that you want and what are things that you need? So like I, I've been surfing a lot. I don't, I didn't have surf fins at the time. I'm going to buy them, but I set this thing in my head. I was like, Oh, you could only buy surf fins and go surfing if you accomplish this thing. Mm-hmm. And there was another thing I was like, Oh, I needed, um, I think like toothpaste, right? Yeah. You need fucking toothpaste. I'm going to buy toothpaste, but yeah. like, yo, you're going to have stinky breath until you fucking get buy this toothpaste. Yeah. So like, I was like, you have to accomplish this thing. So I was like, I need toothpaste tomorrow. So I'm going to learn how to solve this Rubik's cube today. Okay. You know? Yeah. That's cool. So like, that's how I got it. You know, done. what's funny is I remember seeing that, like, you know, cause I don't like, you don't post pictures of your vision board, but I remember you completed the Rubik's cube and you're like, finally did it. You're like, this has been on my, uh, my vision board goal list for two years. And I finally did it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. But the thing is like, it was so long, but I got it done in one day. And That's because crazy. did you watch YouTube videos? Yeah, YouTube what? videos. I had like this small book, and I was just like, just I was doing it all day because I was like, "Yo, you fuck! Like, you're gonna you need to brush your teeth tomorrow morning. Yeah, you need to go get toothpaste." <laughs> <laughs> right? like, that's a, that's a. That's a really smart way to do it. Yeah. Well, I I just kind of had that epiphany and I was like, I'm going to start doing this with like most of my goals now. Like you, how would you say you are at uh, managing your time? Cause that's, I feel like my biggest struggle. Yeah. Cause I love, I mean, not, I don't love it, but I procrastinate naturally and I'm trying to work on that and fix that. That's another thing. This whole quarantine Mm -hmm. stuff. Well, it's kind of like time is like not a thing right now. Like if you don't have like a nine to five job or even, well, even Stuff before like that. that, were you good at managing your time? Because I've always been terrible. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for me with managing my time is like you have a calendar, especially on your phone. You just put it in, put it in. Um, but you actually do it sometimes. I'll, I'll, I'll I set. always do it. Really? I mean, I, I like, got into that. It's kind of like my religion. That's so smart. No, because like I'll <laughs> yeah. even it, it's I don't know if it's obsessive or not. Like, but I'll even put like, oh, one hour practice guitar, two hours watch TV, one hour eat food like. Yeah, because like I feel like if you don't have structure, if you don't have routines in your life, like it's just gonna, like, where's yeah, where's the day going? For you know? sure. That's why I feel like uh, it's I feel like I do sometimes. Like I'll write, I need to get this done today, and I feel like I lag it, and then I think I'm doing it's different. So much. I think it's different for creative types though, because yo, it's like you're gonna write the script, but like. Or something like that. That shit might not be done in two hours. I don't write that. I don't write that down. You know what I mean? I don't okay. write that kind of stuff down. That's that's the way. I so don't, you're talking about things different than that. I'll write a thing. I'll write a thing where like on my on my goal list mm-hmm. where it's like let's say like something like where it comes to writing. I'll mm-hmm. write write twenty jokes today. Mm. You know, and sometimes twenty of them are trash, bro. You know, sure. but, but it's you, like you got, you, you got the reps in. You got to get the reps in exactly. Whereas where it's not something super creative where it's like, I have a goal. It's like, okay, I want to get a, I want to get representation like mm-hmm. management this month. And I know what I have to do to get there, mm. but I, sometimes I lag it mm. and it's like, you know, it's like you have to certain things you have to get done and do every day. And do you sometimes think that's, mad. do you think that's a uh, just procrastination or is it because like you said about just stopping comedy for a while, were you scared of just like doing it? I don't think I don't think I'm scared of I I used to be kind of scared of rejection and more more like what people like think I used to be scared of getting judged but I'm not anymore mm. you know it's I feel I feel I feel fucking like ready dude like, that's awesome you know what I, mean? I that's feel fucking ready awesome. like I because I, I want to be working yeah um I want to be working and I feel like I'm ready and I don't know like this quarantine thing that it changed me like I don't know if it made me more mature 
mm. or it, like it, it broke me at one point, dude. Like I stopped caring about how I looked, like legit. Like, yeah, I stopped uh, taking when, care of when myself. When did you get that one eighty? Because you you lost all that weight already, and you the weight like, thing. The weight thing was like the first thing that hit me. I was like, oh shit, I look bad, bro. Yeah. Like I look like the Grinch right now. Mm. You Do you know? feel better? I'm starting to feel better. I mean, mm. it take you know those kinds of things are a process. Mm. Uh, I'm starting to feel better. It's just it's like I said, it's hard from going from you know we were bartending. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with p people every day, and bartending is it's it's a it's a cool job in a sense where most of the time the people you deal with aren't always terrible. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the the cool difference between bartending and serving. Mm. Serving like you're like listen to the name, dude. You're serving. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're a servant. Yeah. Or like your your bartending it's very laid back. It's conversational. Here and there you're going to deal with the snobby person. Yeah. But you've seen me deal with snobby people, bro. Yeah. I mess with them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like I mess with them. So And then after that, I'm out talking to who knows how many people. Mm. I'm doing shows every night. I'm yeah. doing like, dude, I would do a show and then I'm doing three open mics. Yeah. I I I'm like I want to perform. I don't even want to be home, bro. I don't sure. I just want to be on stage. Yeah. And uh, I think after all that, it hit me. And then now, now it's like hard. And I'm just thinking like, how do I get back on stage? But I don't like, I don't. Do you think you might move out of LA just because you don't know when things are going to open up here? I've been thinking about going to fl like getting a one way ticket to Florida mm -hmm. to like perform out there and do like some shows and yeah. open mics out there. And I also have a friend doing comedy in Texas, but then it's like, I go to those places and then I'm putting acting on a complete stop too. Yeah. Because I've already booked two. I've booked two feature mm. films during this whole quarantine. Yeah. I booked a bunch of commercials. I was just at a studio two weeks ago filming a skincare commercial. I don't even have good skin, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, that's all. It's all attitude, bro. I'm telling you. Sure. Like I make my skin look good because yeah. of like my attitude. Yeah. But so it's like those are the things I have to think about. It's like, do I? It's like stand up more important than this and this because stand-up will come back to LA. Yeah. But acting hasn't gone anywhere. It's not going anywhere. It's like, it hasn't, it hasn't really, they done. stopped doing movie productions, mm -hmm. but now it's like, now they're on and they're just taking safety measures. Yeah. So they're just adapting. Like yeah. everyone's getting COVID tested. And exactly. Like Vaccines like, should be coming out pretty soon, right? Ma masks on set vaccine should be coming out soon. Um, it's just the, the performer. So, musicians mm -hmm. it sucks for them right now because mm -hmm. they can't perform anywhere in the country they yeah. can't, you can't even fill up a stadium you know what i mean let alone a room exactly yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean so like like dude have you seen uh they got fined i think but at the comedy store you know have you been to the comedy store yeah. before yeah you know when you walk in on the patio there's that front window mm -hmm. right there they were doing th they were performing through that window yeah and they had like, like maybe like you can't have yeah, many they got people fined on the patio. Because, like they were just watching comedy from in the patio, yeah. a social distance. Yeah. It's like, why are you stopping yeah. it? Like, let it, like, yeah. like, you know, like we clearly want to do it. Mm -hmm. And these people clearly want to watch it. I was so excited when you told me like you like performed at the comedy store or like other, these other places or you've been a lot yeah. because, uh, before I met you, I think my first couple years in LA, I hated it. I was absolutely probably the worst like emotional states I've ever been in. And the first time I went, to why is that? Uh, I went up with, uh, through, um, a breakup, like on the transition here. Uh, I didn't really like school, the school I was going to. I didn't really like what, were you in school what for? I was doing. Uh, it was mathematics at the time. Oh, really? <laughs> and yeah. Out here? Out here at UCLA. Wow. Yeah. Oh, UCLA. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting next to a Bruin right now. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Okay. It was cool. It was cool. But I changed the sociology because I was like, yo, I'm not going to cram numbers all day. Yeah. But that's not really the point. Uh, and, uh, I didn't really know a lot of people out here. All, all this shit and uh i went to the comedy store one night with a good friend of mine and it was a like a crazy lineup um i listened to rogan a lot so it was rogan it was delia it was diaz Chappelle showed up like it was oh, so you had like you went to a comedy like night it was just like a list a list like everybody that Those like the best nights there that and it was my first time what room it was the main room oh yeah. and i laughed my face off Right. And yeah. I, this is a sad dude going to the comedy store. Right. And I laughed my fucking face off. And like the next day I was like cramping for how much my face was cramping for how much I laughed. 
and it totally changed me and it changed my viewpoint of comedy that's why when i speak to comedians or like i i have a total uber respect for it mm-hmm. because they're like oh you're a fucking comedian what the fuck does that mean like you're yeah. not doing it. yo that night those comedians changed my life that's amazing and that's like amazing to hear that's like my goal no you know for I mean? sure for sure and like like it's it is a job like you those people that night changed my total like vibration of just like emotions yeah you know i went from super sad and depressed and then once those after that show i was one of the most happiest kids out there that's so incredible you know that's like the ultimate goal because like i feel good now like i have people that follow me on instagram i don't have a big following mm-hmm. but i have like people that will follow me on instagram that will message me like dude you're so funny like you made my day thank you so much and like those messages i'm like not even kidding i could be anywhere and i'm crying like not like like sad crying dude they're like tears of joy because i'm like i'm like oh man i just like made someone's day that's someone text me one time that i like saved their life that day yeah they were like contemplating like suicide sure. or something and i made them like crack up from doing some stupid thing that's and i'm like man and i was like wow like that's amazing and, like but like that's like the ultimate goal but to do it to the whole world like yeah. so I've, I've it written down because it's like i, I just like i want to make the whole world laugh at the same time yeah like dude that's unreal <laughs> and i really want to do it yeah but man. it starts small man like those exactly. those people who hit you up those are just like they're the, reminders to keep they're going, like bro. yo keep doing it mm-hmm. yo like exactly yeah because like it's like i just changed with one person it's like and that's all that matters bro at the end of the day if you help that one person like those People helped you. Like, bro, you could have been the only person. Like, obviously, everybody in that room was enjoying the show. Yeah. But it might not have impacted everybody the same way. In that way. way. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, and that's that's at least my goal, bro. I just want to make people feel better and, like, change their lives, bro. Because, like, I needed that when I was young. I didn't have that. I was that mm-hmm. for myself. Sure. And that's probably why I was the class clown, bro. Because I'm making myself laugh while I'm making other, other people, people laugh. laugh. You know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like I do the best on stage is when I'm making myself laugh. And, you know, when I'm making you're, you, you, Do you ever get, like, you, something comes out of your mouth that's not necessarily scripted, and you're like, oh, shit, that was some good yeah. stuff, Yeah, oh, man. dude, there's a... <laughs> I, had a I, had, I have it on video somewhere on my computer, dude. I was cracking up. It was, uh... I had this really tacky joke, mm. and I, I wrote it, and, you know, like, so do comedians will write the same jokes. Yeah. And I'm not saying I wrote it first, whatever. Like, who cares? But this other big comedian had, like almost word for word the same joke as you and his special came out like a year and a half two years later okay. so like same joke but it's like oh i can't now i'm like i can't say this joke anymore yeah. like you know what i mean like he said it and it's on fucking netflix no yeah. but i said this joke and it's about uh smoking weed while driving mm-hmm. and literally all i said was like i was like i smoke weed while i drive and this lady who was like sitting like to the left of me <laughs> <laughs> she's all she goes she goes She's all, no way. She's all like, 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 right. Like, like it was like the biggest deal. Yeah. And I went, I went, I went, what bitch? I do. <laughs> right. <laughs> and everybody in the room was starts clapping, bro. It was my first, like, like half standing ovation. Like a couple people stood up cause they thought it was so funny, but it yeah. was so organic and so real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause that, that's not scripted. Exactly. Well, it wasn't scripted. Like, and I was like, Oh, that's funny. And, and then I was like, if I say this joke again and someone has that reaction, I know what to say. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, you, you remember those things, but that's where that came from. I've had a couple of those moments. I remember this one time I was uh, doing the show at, uh, f- what was this show at? I think it was the ha ha. And I want uh, to go see you at the ha ha. Yeah. You saw me at the ha ha. I did okay that night. Yeah. Nothing special. I was tired, bro. You know? Like, yeah. Did you, you- it was super late when you came on and then yeah. you were supposed to be like three, but you ended up being like seven. Yeah. Or eight. I was just like the third person up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would have showed up later. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been doing open mics before that then. Sure. But, um, no excuse anyways, bro. Yeah. Um, so I, I did this show, I think it was the ha ha. And, uh, there was this dude in the front row who looked like he just wasn't having a good time. Like mm. a couple comedians were picking on him before. And he was like sitting there. He was like this. He was a big dude, right? He mm-hmm. was a big dude. He's sitting there like he looked all angry. Yeah. So like the first thing I did was I just get on the stage and I like kind of I'm in person. I start impersonating him. So I cross my arms. Yeah. And I'm all. <laughs> great. And these girls all around him. Everyone starts cracking up and I just do everything. He's th- and then he finally starts like laughing. He finally starts. Oh, like, that's awesome. Right. He finally starts like this. Right? Okay. 
And then I, but I'm like doing the laugh and the chuckle with him. So I'm all like, he's all like, he's, he's all like this all. Right. And I'm all doing it with a momo. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he goes, he goes, that's enough, bro. He goes like, that's enough, bro. So I jumped on his table. Dude, I don't know. And I, would go, I went, don't ever tell me that's enough. But like, <laughs> right? And everyone's cracking up. And he was like taken back. And yeah. I was like, I just put this big guy and I like take In his him. Place. I, yeah, it was, yeah. It, was, it was fun. Yeah. That's the, that's the difference between comedy and acting. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what I mean by you're free in comedy. Sure. Because you're free when you're acting. You're free to go where you want with your emotions. emotions. But when you're doing comedy, dude, you can do yeah. whatever you want mm. and say whatever you want. Yeah. And most of the time, if you are in the right and it's creative and it's smart, yeah, it's not going to come off as ignorant and rude and it's going to come off as funny. Yeah. You know, uh, Dave Chappelle came out with his, his, one of his specials, uh, yeah. sticks and stones. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. Su- a super con- one. It was, it, it, I think controversial, it was, it was super, super controversial. controversial, but dude, there wasn't one offensive. J- I don't think any of those jokes were offensive. No, I think they were all so well. He's written. so smart. Dude, he's like the biggest intellectual comedian. He's so funny, but like, like people it's like, you know, the way people were chewing them out for that. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, come on. Yeah. Like uh, that's you so can't. creative. It's that's that's an art right there for sure. Like you know what I mean. But he's free. Yeah. And he t- dude, you can see it. He took his mm-hmm. time. Yeah. He's making himself laugh. And, mm-hmm. You know that's so what he does. I have a lot of friends at home who uh, uh, are pretty like who got married very early. Yeah. And oh, I got married I, early. Yeah. No, that's why I wanted to ask. I was like, you're one of the only people in L.A who I know who've got married super early and like are in the in t- entertainment industry. Hold on, dude. I'm taking a picture of your gnarly toe curl right now. My gnarly. <laughs> he's got like, the, he's like flexing his toes on me right now. <laughs> so I was got to take a picture of that real quick. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to talk about my early marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so how's that experience been? Like, Oh man, it's like, uh, cause you never t- like you, uh, you always talk so passionately and adamantly about your wife and it's super like, uh, I guess, uh, cool, inspiring. I don't know. No, like it's, all those. It's like the most, I don't even know how to say this. It's the most, uh, amazing journey when you love someone and it for sure has had, it's, I mean, every relationship, ups and friends, downs. friendships have their up and downs. And this, sure. uh, actually during this, uh, during this whole quarantine COVID thing, uh, we're actually just working things back out together because we mm-hmm. took a break yeah. because I was, dude, I was letting myself go. I wasn't like, oh, dude, I wasn't brushing my teeth anymore. I was like letting mm-hmm. myself go. Dude, I wasn't like just like shaving. I wasn't taking, I wasn't taking care of myself. Like, mm-hmm. and, like who wants to be with someone like that? That's not someone you feel, you didn't fall in, you know, like mm-hmm. if you change and you're not that person, that person fell in love with mm-hmm. and you have someone like my wife, who's, <sighs> Just always trying to like go like next level. Yeah, you know, and she's like, dude, she, if you want to meet a hard worker, like she's a person. Like, she's writing like two ebooks right now, and she does, dude. She's she's booked like three movies during this whole thing. She, she's a she's a hard worker, so she inspires me too. And so like, I mean, maybe maybe I could go Mormon and I could marry you and I can marry her, and then I'm married to two hard workers. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <Are you> like. <laughs> I'd be down. Uh, I'd be down. (laughs) It might be the first Mormon gay marriage, (laughs) like at least uh, (laughs) in California. It's not legal though. Yeah, but uh, ain't legal, (laughs) right? We'll we'll have our own show. That'd be a good joke, bro. It would be a good joke. (laughs) (laughs) It'd be a good joke, and it'd be a better show. Yeah, for (laughs) sure. uh, Just drop the bitters company, bro. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go tell Netflix about our new uh, story idea. Mm -hmm. Don't even post this podcast until. uh, until we get the show going, <laughs> but uh, okay. So I was talking about my wife, right? Oh, so yeah, I was just like, how, we, how's that experience getting married young? And like, because like, I feel like people change so much. Like, I'm not the same person I was like you were just, like a year ago, let alone yeah. like three years ago, let alone like five years ago. That's where this uh, break we we took this break. Mm-hmm. That's that's uh, that's kind of where this this break was. Is we both weren't the same people mm, that you guys fell in love with at the time. Yeah, for like, sure. And who we met, we're both so different. Mm-hmm. And so, like when I met her, I don't know how. Like, I just knew it, mm-hmm. and I was, dude. Like, I I don't like to 
like, I don't mean to talk myself up and whatever, but I was a player. You know what I mean? Sure. Like when I met, when I met my wife, I was talking to three other girls. One of them yeah. being another oh, wait, girl. Pause real quick. Uh, so Antonio, when we were bartending, this dude, man, like he could talk to anybody and it's very impressive. It's one of the most admirable things that, uh, I have for you because like he could talk to anybody, have a conversation with any girl. He has the most absolute confidence. Like, Oh, I, I don't know if it's like true. It could be true or not, but it looks true. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it comes off as like, yo, like, like, I'm the shit. Like, you should want to talk to me. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's super cool because, like, I, I'm seeing it. And I'm just like, man, like, I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't, and, I don't. I think it's an experience thing. You just put your reps in. <laughs> like, just put your reps in. <laughs> okay, continue. So you were a player when you met your wife. I was, I was, I was a player when I, was, when I met my wife. I was, uh, I literally, like, I wouldn't say a relationship. Mm -hmm. But I was... I had a thing, like a mm -hmm. pretty like thing with three different girls. Yeah. One of them being with another girl from the acting class. That sure. I met my wife in. Oh, okay. Right. And maybe it was maybe like, and dude, this is maybe like first class. It was the first class, this chick, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, was, it was that easy. Sure. And, uh, so I'm really like, I don't really think I really like looked at my wife and like talk to her or anything really beautiful woman from Mexico. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't even call her a woman at the time. You know, she was 19. I was 19. I was a boy. She was a girl. Beautiful though. Mm -hmm. And, uh, dude, something like took over me. I went, Oh shit. Like, <laughs> you weren't like, even paying attention to the acting class or what? <laughs> yeah. I was, like, I was like, I was like, Whoa, like that's the one. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's crazy. And like, it was weird because, I, I tried, right? She's all like, I remember, I remember after class, it was like the third class. I hear her like, oh, I'm going to, oh, she's like, okay, bye. And someone was like, oh, how are you getting home? She's like, oh, I'm going to take the bus. And I was like, opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was, like, I, was like, I was like, I'll take you home. Yeah. And she was like, oh, okay. You know? And then, um, my friend, my friend, uh, Ezra was taking the class with me. So he had to get in the car and we're driving. I drop her off at the house, and she's like, "Dude, he's like, he's like, I'm gonna get at her." Oh no! Right? And I'm like this, dude. Like me and him were like, we're, we're bros. And I went, "No, you're not." I went, I went, Ezra. There's no fucking way. I go, "That's my girl, dude." I go, "I'm gonna marry her." I legit told him, "I was like, bro, I'm gonna marry that girl." You know? He's yeah. like, "No, you're not." Like he, like he knows me. You know? He's, yeah. like, he's like, "No, you're not, dude. You're gonna break her heart." He's like, "Don't do that, to her. She's a sweet girl. Don't break her heart." Yeah. I was like, "Dude, I'm not." You know, I'm not going to break her heart. Sure. And so uh, I texted her, whatever, we're, t we're texting a little bit. And I was like, I was like, oh, you want to like kind of like go get lunch and stuff like a couple sure. hours before class, yeah. like hang out? She's like, yeah. You know, and I take her, we're walking around, dude. And I'm like, I was like, just fly me, dude. I was spitting game. I was like, any stupid American bimbo chick. Yeah. Like, would have kissed me, you know, like yeah. I'm on the beach, dude. And I was trying to kiss her and she's like moving away. She's all moving away. She's like, I have a boyfriend and all this stuff. Swear. Right? I swear. I was like, I was like, yeah, where's your boyfriend? She's like, oh, he's in Mexico. I go, he, I go, he's doing this to some girl right now. Like, you know what I, mean? I was like, I was like, I did not say that. I swear to oh God. Oh my God, bro. Multiple times, bro. Damn. I was like, I was like, you that's know, awesome. Yeah. That's bro. awesome. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, no, like, I was like, I'm getting at you today. Yeah. You know? And, uh, dude, she didn't let me kiss her. Pissed me off. I made me mad. Cause I was like, I was like, I, I, I was like, I, just, I should spit game of the year. Like I should get like an <laughs> award for this. You know? I was like, yeah. I, was, I was like, I was spitting, you bro. Were, you were on your game for sure. I was like, yeah. I was on my game. I was like, we didn't even have a drink, bro. Like, Damn. you know what I mean? I was like, I was like, I should, I was like, I should, we should. I was waiting for my medal, bro. Like we get to class, you know, and she said, like, she, she, she told me like, you know, same thing. She's like, she, she's like, uh, she's like, it was just your attitude and your confidence. And like, she's like, she's like, I wanted, she told me she wanted to kiss me. Yeah. You know, she's like, she's well, like, that's what, that's your medal right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And she told me, uh, she told me she didn't because like, she knew what game I was running. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so we hung out a few more times 
and I finally got that kiss and whatever, you know, and that's that much better. Oh, it was so much better. <laughs> it was so much better. So me That's and her, bro. me and her, like, dude, and like the second I met her, yeah, I don't, I like immediately stopped texting those other girls. It was like the moment I met her, yeah, I didn't even continue any of it on. I was like, yeah, fuck this. Like, sure. I was like, this is, this is it. Like, this is the game right here. Yeah. And, um, my friend, snaky little fucker, dude, we're, um, the me, guy who was in the car with, yeah, okay. that day who said he was going to get at her dude, jealous little baby, dude. So we go, um, we go get some lunch before class one day, the three of us. Yeah. And I go up to get some water cups for the three of us. Mm -hmm. And he told her, he said, look, he goes, you are, you seem like such a nice girl. He said, Antonio will break your heart. Like stop hanging out with him immediately. This is what he told That's her. That's a shitty friend, bro. A terrible friend. <laughs> <laughs> terrible friend. And what's funny is she, she told me legit the next yeah. day. But like, we're, I was at the point where like, I was like, bro, no, no one, anything can do can hurt me. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, 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 fuck him. Like, that's what he thinks. Like, yeah. he wants to end this. Like, sure. like maybe he was just looking out for her best interest. I can give a shit. I got her now. Mm -hmm. And dude, we just, we just worked out. And like, she met me. She met me probably in one of my like darkest places in my life. Cause I was like, that was where I was like getting over my whole pill mm -hmm. thing. And, uh, she met me like right when I quit doing stand up comedy. So she met me like she met me. I overdosed in front of her. Damn. And, uh, it all, dude, it all happened so fast. So hanging out with her, whatever we're, we get in a, we just get into this beautiful relationship, dude. Yeah. Like I like, don't even know how to explain it. Everybody was like, bro, you guys are just so madly in love. Like even like, to like these like dates yeah people be like it's like you just met yeah you know but i remember like you know her like being from mexico and all these things like didn't even come to mind and then like uh i remember she told me that she had to like leave the the country for like a year or something mm -hmm. like that to like for her visa oh shit and all that and i went you know, and there's 19 year old me like, oh shit. Like when did dude, you guys get married? I've How old never you? been in love. We were 20 when you guys got married. Yeah. Okay. We met, we met when we were 19. Oh, we were was that why you guys got married? Like, so she could stay here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yes. And no. Okay. I'd say yes and no, because I'd say more no, because that wasn't the reason. No, obviously why, like you love, but that's like, that's what, but that's obviously what sparked it. Yeah. Because I'm sitting there at 19 never been in love before yeah like dude i've never had like a serious relationship i've never been oh, in really love. yeah like i've never been in love i told you I've, i was like a like a player yeah you know and like i was a player dude i had i had a little sister who was like two years younger than me and i was mm -hmm. hooking up with like her friends and stuff like that like Damn. you know it was just yeah. like whatever so i was like okay like there's like and i'm sitting there like shit what do i do and I'm, i remember i'm like i remember like I was staying on my dad's couch at the time, mm -hmm. you know, cause like I wasn't living there. I was, I, I was, I remember I texted her a picture and I was like, oh, she's like, she's like, you don't sleep on a bed. And I was like, no, I don't sleep on a bed. I'm sleeping on my dad's couch. And like, I sent mm -hmm. a picture of this couch yeah. and, cause he was renting out his rooms to like other people and stuff. And, uh, so I, uh, I'm sitting there and I'm like, fuck, what do I do? What do I do? You know, because like, she's about to leave to the yeah. She, I, was like, she had, well, I was like, I was like, in a couple months, yeah. she has to go back to Mexico for a year. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I'm absolutely in love with her. Yeah, you know what I mean. And like, dude, I didn't have money to buy a ring, like nothing, like yeah. nothing special, dude. Oh, I should pull out the wedding pictures, and you would die. They're awful. So we, I took her on this like, like. This really cool spot I know. Uh -huh. It has a view of downtown LA. Yeah. It has a view of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And it has a view of mountains. And okay. I took her there uh, like sunset, right? Wow. And we go, we're off we're having we're having a good time, just being young and sure. just having a good time, you know. And uh I'm like shit, I'm shitting myself, dude, because I was like, Am I really gonna ask her? And she had no idea. Like mm -hmm. she didn't ask me to do it, you know yeah. what I mean? Like we didn't this is a discussion we never, never had. had. Just her like having to leave and i remember reacting to that 
it's just been like, oh man, that sucks. Yeah. Like it was nothing like, oh, like how do we get you to stay? It wasn't mm-hmm. like, I went, I went, oh, so I'm going to do it. So dude, I got down on my knee. Right. And I could see it in her face, but like happiness, like she starts crying. Oh no, right? wait, that's beautiful, bro. She starts crying. And I go, I like the first thing I said was, I don't have a ring. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm all like young and stupid. Like I don't have a ring. But I was like, I was like, I just have my love, dude. It's like yeah, the bro, most the, corny shit. The ever. girl, the girl at the bar got a ring, bro. Right? <laughs> exactly. The girl at the bar got a ring. It was like the most corny shit you could hear, dude. Like yeah. I was just like, I was like, I don't have a ring. All I have is my love. I was like, Paula, will you marry me? Uh-huh. She was like, yeah. yes. She was like, yes. And she calls me by my middle name, Dion. She's like, yes, Dion. Oh, I like right? Dion. And I was like, I was like, ah, dude. I started crying. I'm all that's, happy. That's beautiful, man. <laughs> so, dude, we like, we do this whole, like, dude, we didn't even, we got married. We didn't even tell our families. Yeah. But we kept it, like, low key secret. We kept it a secret. For how long? For, uh, we told, I told my family uh, probably within a year. Okay. And we waited to tell her because her family's old school, bro. Mm-hmm. So like, dude, so the way her family found out is ugly. It was, it was ugly. Um, <laughs> so dude, it was actually, it's so funny. So eventually within like a year or two, um, I start making good money. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, I was actually making really good money. So I got her nice rings. Yeah. You know, like I have a nice ring, but most people you see with wedding rings, not so nice. Yeah. Especially if you're like younger. Exactly. Yeah. You know? They're like thin and yeah, whatever. shit, whatever. So I got, uh, so I got us some rings and whatever. And, uh, I proposed to her again. I proposed to her again with rings and she was all, she was ecstatic and whatever. And I was like, let's like, let's plan a real wedding and all this stuff. Oh, wow. And she's like, she's like, what about my family? And I was like, oh, oh shit. No. I, was like, I was like, oh shit. I was like. I was like, this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? I was like, I'm going to propose to you again. I proposed to like three, four times. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. So f- first, I think first we told, uh, we told her mom that uh, she was engaged and she was like, her mom was like, you didn't tell me right away that how long have you been engaged for? Like she was tripping and she's like, no, we're not telling your dad. She's like, this is what you got to do. You got to tell you guys like, you yeah, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you got to propose no. in front of the dad. And no. I was like, what? Like, that's my nightmare to propose in front again. of like her dad. I'm like, yeah. you know, like just, and like you haven't met him at the time or anything. I, I've met him a few times, but like, yeah. there's like that, like that language barrier. Like sure. dude, I'm like learning Spanish now. I'm like, I, I need to communicate with their family. That's like the difference between like me now and like young me is like, yeah. young. I didn't give a shit like yeah. about that kind of stuff. Now yeah. it's like, Damn, like I'm part of the you're, family. You're you're a lot more self aware even since the last time like we hung out. Yeah, like, nine months ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm very self aware. That's another thing that this whole quarantine was. It made me self aware because there's I saw. Well, a you're lot of stuck things. alone at home mostly, and you were in the woods and shit camping, and you're stuck with your fucking thoughts all exactly. the time. Exactly. And if you like can't learn to like li- love yourself, learn about yourself, and be self aware, you're gonna go fucking insane mm-hmm. and basically what you did like lose yourself. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Hundred percent. I think being self-aware uh, changed me, bro. Like, there's gonna be a new Antonio coming around the corner. I mean, I see it because there's so I much. There's so much I want to change, but like for the better. Because mm-hmm. I want to be, dude. I want to be a monster. I don't want to be like that. That dumb ignorant monster person. in a good way. Yeah, a monster okay. in a good way. Like, yeah. I don't be like that dumb ignorant person. Like that most people know me as. I want to mm-hmm. be like. But I want to be taken seriously, seriously, but I'm still a fucking clown. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm still funny. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't want to like. I don't want to like lose my funny in the process of people taking me seriously, Mm -hmm. but I just, there's just, uh, things I know I need to change. And uh, what are those things? I talk over people a lot, Mm. which like I've been, that's why I've been practicing on the podcast. I'm like, I'll let Nick talk. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Um, listening is a hard skill too. Listening is a hard skill, but I've I've never listened to people because I always thought like what I have to say is important and it usually isn't. Mm -hmm. It's usually some stupid, dumb stuff. Mm. Um, so I think, Listening is not one is a huge one. Not talking over people is another one. Not being selfish. I can mm. I, I have a tendency to be selfish. Sure. And I think that does when you're someone who needs attention. Mm-hmm. What I have on my vision board right now was give people what I wrote down on the top, something like give people your attention and listen to people. And they're going to want to give you attention and listen to you. And it'll come back to you and just abundance mm-hmm. you know it's like it's like people like already like are drawn to me yeah but imagine if i give like 
people my like actual attention and I actually listen how much they're going to be drawn to me. And I think it'll also help me on stage for sure. Instead of coming up on stage and like doing this act when I'm actually there and I'm listening and I'm in with people. And I think it's going to just change yeah. my game a hundred percent all around yeah. stand up and acting because yeah. acting, you have to listen the whole time you're doing mm-hmm. this scene with someone you're li- you have to listen to yeah. them to know what's going on in the scene. Yeah. A drill that I did, because I had a similar issue like that, and a lot of people, especially like, oh, my name is Antonio, my name is Nate, nice to meet you, and you don't hear their name, but they said it. Mm-hmm. And you know you're not listening if you don't remember their name, because you're not really listening, you're just focusing on you saying your own name. So the biggest thing is like, whenever I meet people, it's always try to listen for their name, because if you listen to it and you know it right after the introduction, you actually listened. Wow. That's crazy. That's actually, I'm going to try that. No, it's really, really, really good. I, I do that all the time. Dude, I meet people. I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. Oh, shit. What was and it was name? only like 10 seconds. How did you not remember the name? Exactly. It's because you were just focusing on, oh, I'm Antonio. I'm Nate. Like, I want you to know my name. Yeah. But the most important thing is you remembering their name. That's so smart. And wow. you practice it a lot bartending. That's how I'm I did sure. That's how I practiced it. Because um, uh, you would get regulars back. At some bars or at my old restaurant, Sonoma, sometimes it's usually a touristy bar. And like you would come back and if you remember their name, you're getting a better tip. You're getting a more connection oh, all the time, all the time. And uh, I remembered this one guy at California Pizza Kitchen two years ago and we ended up getting uh, getting his number. And I texted him. I was like, hey, Gary, my name's Nate. Uh, you gave me your number two years ago at California Pizza Kitchen. We had a good conversation and. Uh, you were like, you're way too good for this place. You shouldn't be working here. I quit my job within the next two weeks. I moved to Sonoma and I was like, Hey man, I just want to let you know, our conversation sparked, uh, that change for me to like move to a different when, restaurant question, question. Um, I mean to talk to you over this, but my, I don't want to lose the thought. Yeah. So when he said that to you and you quit the job, yeah. Why'd you find another bartending gig? Like because I still like bar bartending. Okay. I just, he was like, yo, you should be working at the W. You should be working at like a nice bar. Like, and it wasn't upgrade. Somewhere where you like learn something. Yeah. Because you're like, yo, money. yeah. Yeah. It's for California pizza kitchen. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. And okay. so I texted him that and I was like, I'm starting my own bitters company. I would love to send you some samples. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so he's like, but I also said, you also had, um, a glass, you had a Kendall Jackson Chardonnay and an extra dry martini with three olives. And that was two years ago. I remember his exact drinks. And he was like, yo, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. How did you remember that? And I knew his name. I knew he rem- he had kids that took a basketball camp at UCLA. This was only like a 10-minute conversation. Yeah. And so he was like, for sure, send me the samples. I'd love to taste them for your bitters company. I sent them to him. He's like, I told my friends about this. And I'll, uh, I'll link you with one of my friends. His friend gives me a call. It's like, oh, I want to order uh, $1,000 worth of your bitters. So we love them. I'd love them to give them out for Christmas gifts. Yeah. So back to your point of just listening to people and what they're doing, it can be way more beneficial or like just in terms of networking, in terms of learning about people than you think. Just learning someone's name, just like listening, just caring about other people because you're right. A lot of people are attracted to you. I know. I've been around you. I'm yeah. attracted to you. But if you actually take the time and listen and care about someone to a point where like, oh my God, this dude really cares about me. I feel it. Yeah. It's going to come back. Yeah. That's, that's where I feel like I have, even in my friendships Yeah, is my hardest thing is like really caring. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it, it might be a protective mechanism, sure. like a defensive mechanism yeah. that I've built over the years. Yeah. Cause I've had like, I've had a lot of people like do me dirty. I don't know if that's it, but like, no, you're absolutely right. Well, it could be like you've been hurt a lot, too, because I have a lot of friends who like they don't want to put them out there and care for other people just because like, yo, like people fuck me over. Why should I care about people? Yeah. Like I'm just going to care for myself, you know? No, but you know, what you said is absolutely right. It'll help. It'll help tremendously with networking and just, you know, just people being drawn to me, mm-hmm. you know, and I think it'll help me in tremendous ways. And especially in the industry you're in, man. Yeah. Yeah. So right now you're. Uh, you're still pursuing acting. You're still pursuing c- comedy with this whole COVID stuff. Hopefully everything like, yeah, it's goes. a lot of writing. And I know everyone's like, are you writing COVID jokes? You're writing COVID jokes. It's like, 
Uh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I mean, yeah. I know it's it's gonna be what's relevant for the next uh-huh. year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I want to. You're planning ahead of that. Yeah, and I want to like, do it. Well, I want to do it in a way. I need to make it personal. Sure. I don't want to talk about like wearing a mat. I don't want to do what everyone's going to talk about. I'd rather do it kind of what I'm talking to you about Mm -hmm. how it really hurt me and how it affected me. Make it in a funny way. Oh, that that's like, but that's the most beautiful part of Mm -hmm. comedy is taking that pain and making it funny. Cause I know it's done the same effect on so many people. Yeah. And I think that you, you can be that person that, that comedy show was for me at that time Mm -hmm. because so many people during this time, bro, have gone through the shitter just like you experienced. Yeah, bro. And if you could portray it in a way that is comic out of a deep, dark place, like I think Mm -hmm. you could change a ton of people's lives. For sure. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. I agree with you. I mean, I I have this joke. I don't know if I've told it to or not. I have this one joke I only say unless I'm absolutely crushing it on stage mm. it's a joke about uh when i was younger like my, my cousin like molested me whatever right mm-hmm. i so, didn't know that okay so <laughs> it's, 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 it's my personal favorite joke yeah. but it only works if the show's going well because mm-hmm. if the show's not going well you get one of these uh and then like that's just to drop like yeah you're not bringing them back from this sure so the joke it's my favorite joke. So like I'm killing, I'm killing it. It's like time to close out. Like, mm. you know, like I know, like I'm doing well. I just want to end it here. I need one more big laugh. Yeah. So like I, some, some type of way I'll talk about it. And like, I've had people come up to me after the show. I'm like, bro, like, thank you for saying that joke. Like it just, you know, like I've gone through the same thing and like, it just made me laugh really hard about it. Cause I usually go like, like, don't feel bad for me. Like I'm over this shit already. You yeah. know, like, but like when I was younger, I go, my cousin molested me. Yeah. And I go, but if I ever run into him again, I'm going to unload on him. Just not the same way he unloaded <laughs> on me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, That's like, hilarious. Bro, it's like, it, it's my favorite joke. Yeah. Because it comes from such a, like, dark place. No, for sure. But, you know, like, it re- it's relatable. So, like, what I want, I want to, like, when it comes to COVID, I want to talk about the stuff that was just the most painful. Not, like... You know, me and my wife taking a break because of like me not taking care of myself. Yeah. And she's like progressing. Like, dude, during this whole time, she was like, dude, she probably read like fucking 25 books. Like, not even exaggerating. Yeah, I, like, I, I definitely read 25 books. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. she probably read like 25 <laughs> books. Where in the beginning, I think I was at like, in the beginning, I wasn't doing books. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have fun. Yeah. I was having fun. I mean, I, in the last like two months, I've probably read eight books or well, something like solid. that you know it's what i mean lot. like it's reading more, a lot of books yeah. a lot of audio books sure you know but it's just like she, she was constantly reading and then she's like oh i want to i want to get my instagram up bro so she got her instagram up she got like four thousand followers in just a couple months just she took like social media courses no way I swear to god dude she started taking like social media courses and then she started getting her shit together and she's like she's like growing rapidly and i'm just doing this i wouldn't say that it may be probably staying the same no, I would say I was doing this oh, okay. like for me at least <laughs> yeah. because that, that's what it felt like. Yeah. But like, you know, like I obviously someone who has the attitude of someone you described, they care about what they look like. Yeah. So for me to stop caring what I look like yeah. has got to be a big thing. That was crazy because from knowing you, you're like, oh, like I only put plant based shit in my body. I only mm-hmm. uh, put like meat that I hunt or fish myself. Mm-hmm. And you saying that letting yourself go it was I was kind of shocked. I was like, really? Like you always preach that you always preach like working out, taking care of yourself. And like, that's why I was like, Oh, you, that really did happen to you. Like 198 pounds, bro. (laughs) 198 pounds, bro. No muscle. Dude. It was like, it was like just a solid stick of fat. That's crazy. it, It, the crazy part was it happened in a matter of a month. Yeah. Just so fast. It was just a lot of, it was just a lot of like, Drinking, not working out. I mean, yeah. That's a problem with alcohol and me. Yeah, mostly like beer though. Like I, I gain weight quick when it's just like hazy IPAs. Oh, or- I, <laughs> I like the, the, the full stuff. The you know? full stuff. It's like you're getting your carbs and your calories in. Yeah, man. So that's uh, the stuff. I mean, I feel like I would like to write jokes about. When did. Okay, so I mean, you. I never even knew there was a fat version 
<laughs> of Nate Blitz. And I, we got to talk about this for a second because you posted a picture two weeks ago that you had me do. I was off my <laughs> rocker, bro. Because I didn't even, I don't even, I might have a screenshot of it because I was sitting there and I started dying. Yeah. And I remember I, I was sitting there alone. I'm, I, I was sad because like, you know, the whole thing with my wife and I'm sitting there like sad and dude, this shit cracked me the fuck up. Cause like, what did you say? Did you say anything or did you just post the picture? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it's a dude, you did this fucking. Were you golfing? No, I just had a hat on. Dude, you had this fucking hat on, dude. You're all fat. And I, went, <laughs> I went, I went, no way. And I was like, you know, you weren't even a little kid. Like, I would have believed it was like a fat little Nate, like little sure. ba- fat baby Nate, like yeah. fat, like eight year old Nate. Yeah. Dude, but you were like fat with 18 year old Nate. Like, I think it was 19, 19, oh 19, God, 19, fat 19 year old Nate. I would have never <laughs> thought yeah. of it, dude. So I see this picture. 185 what pounds inspired in you? Cause you played golf. Yeah. So what inspired you to get in shape? Because I know it was not golf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it was not Why don't you think it was golf? I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> what are you doing? No, man. Uh, so basically, like, uh, I went to community college and I had a buddy who was like a big power lifter and I was dating this really good girl like in high school, like had a great time. But then she broke up with me to go to college mm-hmm. and I kind of let myself go during that time. And I worked at the restaurant in the restaurant industry. You get hella free shit. Yeah. And did you let yourself go because of the breakup? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. And then this guy was like, oh, let's go train. And then I lost like 30 pounds in like six months. So he had you on like, did he have you on like a diet plan too? Nothing. I was just working out every yeah. day, like hard. Did you lose weight during the breakup too? Did you stop eating? No, I ate a fuck ton. Really? I did the opposite. So yeah. a lot of people are either one end of the ex- spectrum. Yeah. When this whole break thing happened Yeah. Uh, with my wife and I during the COVID thing, I probably lost, I mean, it didn't happen that long ago. Mm-hmm. It's still pretty recent. Um, Dude, I didn't, I don't, I I didn't eat anything Mm -hmm. legit for three days. I couldn't eat, like physically couldn't eat. Long term fast, bro. Just say that. Yeah, it was long. (laughs) It was long term fast. Like, dude, my like my Jewish roots were hit. Yeah. So like, I was like, I was like, this is what I get for not fasting for Yom Kippur the last ten years. Yeah. But you know what I mean, like, dude. So then, like, day four, I start eating like little by little. Yeah. And I step on the scale, and I was at like, dude, I was at like. Like a nice solid 169. Mm-hmm. I was at 160. Yeah. And I was like, that's scary. Dang, like your lose. fluctuation's crazy, man. Because yeah. you went from 160 to what? 195? 185? 195? Yeah. No, 198. <laughs> that's that's a ridiculous I always fluctuate. I fluctuate weight quick. I, yeah. think, I think the start of that was mm-hmm. in high school because I was a wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to cut weight a lot. So I think, yeah. I think my body, like just picked up on that used to it yeah i was like i was because like that's the thing if i'm not consistent for a month bro Mm -hmm. i'm telling you i see a difference in two weeks of like eating like shit because i'm like not just you know what i mean like well i'm I'm technically working out but i'm carrying 140 pound trees all day on people's cars yeah you know i'm getting my i'm getting my reps in (laughs) (laughs) like for sure for sure but um i'm just calories i'm just eating shit yeah but yeah, so back to you. What were you saying? I was just talking about uh, the working out. That's how I just got inspired. It's usually always a breakup or some shit going like down south in your life that ex- inspires you to like work out. Even right now, like I, I'm pretty fit right now. I'm really, 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 really strong. I'm into like calisthenics and everything as well as like Olympic lifting and yeah, whatever. So but it was uh, that break with that that guy that inspired you to get that in shape inspired and me. Stay? Inspired me to get in shape, and then my life changed i was like oh shit i'm happier oh shit i feel better oh i could like touch my toes and i'm more mobile i feel better about myself i was like and then i became a personal trainer uh a couple years after that because i was like yo if i could help someone the way this guy helped me Mm -hmm. change their life in that way that'd be awesome are you personally still taking on clients yeah how does that feel like do you feel good about it because that's like something i've been thinking about because people will hit me up like Hey, I see your journey. Like, you think you could train me? Like, can I work out with you? And yeah, why not? 
Yeah, right. And like, what's the process like of getting your certification? It's pretty easy. I mean, it's basically just like for a test, take it. And then uh, you can either decide to do a practical, which is basically like a uh, practical classes. Like you show how to cue people up mm-hmm. because if you know your shit, you don't really need that. So I didn't know how to cue people up. I didn't, I knew my form, but like t- portraying uh, like a pull up or a squat or whatever. Oh, just do that. You can't really say that. You're like, oh, you have to shift your your ankles need to be this way your toe like mm-hmm. just articulating in a way that it doesn't make them feel done and make y- you like look like a know-it-all yeah does that make sense for sure so explaining that in a way and it's pretty easy and i recommend it to anybody and you learn a lot too the science the knowledge the nutrition facts behind yeah. it i became a personal trainer not to help other people but to help myself really? and in the process i've helped other people that's really interesting i want to hear more about that <laughs> no, seriously i want to hear more about that yeah no because i was like oh i don't know shit about diet i don't know shit about so why don't i study it and get a certification so you studied it and got a certificate but okay what has it done for you along the way like so you know as a comedian when i make people laugh mm. it does something not like not only am I helping them, but it, it helps me probably more than I'm helping them. Mm. Like, same thing. Is it the same thing? 100%. Yeah. yeah. Because like I'll have this one client always sticks out to me. So he was a hundred and sorry, 330 pounds when we started. And in a uh, th- big boy, big boy. S- I think he was six, six God. big boy. And he couldn't walk very well. He couldn't like fit in his car. Okay, very how well. the fuck did you do? Yeah, so we just... I feel like I have to whisper because I feel like he could hear me. Like, Yeah, yeah. no, for sure. But long story short, he dropped, I think, 35 pounds in the two and a half months we worked out together. 35 pounds. And he texted me one day and he was like, hey, man, like, I can hold my kid better. I could walk down my stairs better. My life is drastically fucking better. Did you get that tear? I was telling you that I would get earlier. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't physically a tear, but, like, I was like, fuck, man. And then I got a lot, I get a lot of text messages that like basically the same things for you. And it's like, oh, I should keep doing this. Yeah. You know, it's that sign. It's that sign, you know, and like not everyone's going to support you. Not everyone's going to be like, oh yeah, for sure. Like Nate's awesome. Antonio's awesome. Like you're going to some guy, some guy. I posted a picture yesterday and I had some guy like to I'm not going to say anything bad about anybody, but no, it, there's haters out there. He was basically hating on you, right? He just said, he said, you're a weirdo. Yeah. And I was like, okay, dude, like, you know, like I, the old me would have gone off on this guy, like for just like, but not like off, like mad. Mm-hmm. I would have just roasted his ass. Yeah. You know? And then I was like, nah. Yeah. I was like, cool. go. I was like cause like, I was like, eventually I go, I go, you know, eventually when it's not people that are following me from high school, Eventually, it's going to be a global thing. Mm-hmm. That it's like following Antonio Montello. Yeah, but if you also look at it objectively, you're like, oh, this guy just called me a weirdo. But you looked at his stuff. And he's like, what could possibly be going in his life? Did his brother just die? Did he just, girlfriend just break up with him? Yeah. And him calling a weird u- weirdo just gave him some satisfaction that made his day a little bit better. Um, but you don't know what's going through his fucking life. No, hundred percent. I mean, dude, I mean, he always sends me weird stuff. He's been hating on me for a long oh, time. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. he, uh, Maybe just you could block that guy. You'd be good. I don't need to block him because <laughs> then, because then I lose a fan. I mean, he follows me, so to me, he's a fan. Yeah. You know? Like, bro, any attention? Fans is good are attention. not. Fans are not always good. Yeah. Sometimes fans are negative. Yeah. Like, bro, because there's people that love you so much they hate you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's those like, bro. You think that person who shot. John Lennon hated John Lennon. That dude loved him, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm telling you, he was his fan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, sure. he knows who he is. Like, I never this, really thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. This guy, this guy, like, like you said, but he went out of his way to tell me I was a weirdo. And like, you know what? I am a weirdo. Like, yeah. <laughs> like all right, bro. Like, you know, what are you cool. telling me? Like, cool. I posted this video, um, uh, a while back, like probably like two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my friend, Airbnb this huge freaking house in the yeah. Hollywood Hills right above the comedy store. Sure. And uh we're all there and I'd like I I was all like you know, I was all drunk and I was making these funny videos like M- like uh MTV Cribs type thing. Mm-hmm. And I, like dude, like as if he thought I was like really trying to be serious, right? I was like, guys, I threw the craziest party here. DJ Tiesto was 
butt naked with girls downstairs DJing for this party. It was wild. And he like he messaged me. He goes, "Cap, you're capping." I'm like, "No shit." I'm like lying. You know, capping like no like capping no law, right? <laughs> so he yeah. goes, he's like, "You're capping, bro. You're a phony." I'm like, "Bro, like it's all a joke. Like yeah. why are you hating so much?" Yeah. So just, to me, it's weird. I mean, also, haters do make your career. Yeah. But it's just and then again, it's just like, bro, like mind your own. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird, but it's like deal with it in the smalls now because I have to be ready. When I am a household name, sure. And there's gonna, why you feel, dude? I'm gonna have like you, you. Have you ever gone through like any, uh, social media like, what are they called? People, Purges, no, like stop fasts. No, no. What are these people called in social media? They're called, like, they're called something. The fa- social media. They're the influencers. Yeah. Have you ever gone through like an influencers page and read their comments? Yeah. It's insane. It's mean, bro. Like, yeah. People are mean. mean. Like, like mean, mean. mean. <laughs> they like really mean. Yeah. But they don't get, like, they don't care. Yeah. Well, and they don't pay attention to them. Like, uh, so living with Kevin, he takes like photos of a lot of influencers, like hundreds and hundreds of thousands, millions of followers. Mm. And they're like, yo, I just post and I'm like, don't look at it. Yeah. Like, I just don't pay attention. And if they do that, why, 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 why should we? Exactly. Cause then they'll, he'll get in his head. Yeah. I know I, I posted these I posted videos one time and people were posting like negative comments. Mm-hmm. This was a couple years ago, and like you know you're posting a video and you're not getting that many views and you got people posting comments. You want to yeah say things back, but these these kids must have been in high school. Mm-hmm. But I was probably like 21, 22. Yeah, you know, and they they wrote something and I, we were going into a little argument, but then I got did I got them so good, and then I would call them my big homie. Uh, my big homie, I'll just call him T, so I don't say his real name. He was like, he he pulled me aside one day, and he was like, bro, look. He said, delete all that shit off your Instagram because it doesn't. He goes, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. He goes, you let these people hate on you, and just don't be bothered by it, and you just do your thing because your shit's funny. But when you look like that, you're letting it look like the smallest people can yeah. have an effect on you. And he's like, you're too big for them. They don't know how big you are yet. Yeah. So he's like, delete the comments. He goes, try. He's like, they know they got roasted. You know, like you know, like you roasted them and it was funny, but just don't mind them. Their business. Don't give them their satisfaction. Yeah. You know. Good advice. And I was like, I was like, oh yeah. So, and it was great advice, bro. Because I've posted some, some crazy stuff before, and like yeah. you know, people will say things, and you know, now I don't let it affect me. You know what yeah. I mean? But. I don't know. I don't know. Like people probably don't hate too much uh, when you're saying stuff. Look at this. Right, you wrote cap, and then here's the video, dude. (laughs) (laughs) This is stupid, and I'm just like, this is this, that's that. Yeah. And then so he wrote. So he wrote cap and this yeah. was like yesterday. He said, bro, you're weird, right? Yeah. I was like, okay. okay. And then he FaceTimed me like two months ago. He has your number? No, on, on Instagram. Okay. He messaged me and he said, uh, what did he say? <laughs> did he message me about some, did he start talking about stuff about like high school and like stuff like that? It wasn't like he, this guy was never one of my friends. Mm-hmm. He was just like, he was jealous because at the time I had this thing with this girl. Mm-hmm. And he started dating her after, but mm-hmm. she would message me a lot. Sure. I mean, I wasn't messaging her and I didn't do anything, but he was, he was like trying to fight me and like all this crazy stuff. I was like, and I was a class clown. I was in a fighter. I've always been like a lover. Yeah. I've always been like someone that wants to like keep the peace. You know sure. what I mean? I'm like, let's, let's, let's keep the peace, yeah. but let's just keep shit funny. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, dude, like just, just relax. And mm-hmm. like ever since then, bro, like he was like, he, t- I don't know, he just brought up some weird stuff. He's like, yeah. bro, so you went to prom with Ariana. I'm like, why does that even matter, bro? Why are you calling me? Like, why? I was, and then I was like, why did I answer this phone call? Yeah, why? You know what I mean? You, didn't, you shouldn't have done that. No, I know. I didn't even. I, I, well, that's why he's in my like, my request. Yeah. 
because I didn't even know it was yeah. Instagram. I was like, uh, all right. You know so I mean? uh, for this whole like growing process, I guess, like just hitting the like the a low point and just like growing again and becoming more self-aware and all that shit. Like what's like some good advice that you could just like tell people because like a lot of people stay in that low point for a very long time and don't get it out for years or ever get out in general. And like you've gone in and out of like low points and like uh, just your what 20 something years of being alive. Like how, how do you get out of that? What, what are some like, just like a couple key points that you could just like point out and say like, this is what you sh- need to do. And this is what to get out. I think the most, 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 most important thing when you hit those low points is to go somewhere that is to, first of all, just, just get the fuck away from any type of environment that will had anything to do with that low point. Mm-hmm. So I'd say go, go on a hike, go to the beach, go somewhere that's not going to take you back to these low points. You know, it's like for me, it was like being home where these low points is like, I got to get out of my house. Yeah. You know, I got to be out in nature. So then you have time to think and then it's really just sit and breathe and realize that every breath you're interacting with the universe Mm -hmm. and the universe loves you or wouldn't have let you be here. It loves you. Yeah. The universe loves me. And for me, I have to like remember that because when you hit these low points, you don't remember you're loved mm-hmm. and you don't feel loved sure. and you don't love yourself. And that's how I feel. You know, you sit there and you're sitting there in the darkness. And when you're in the darkness, you can't see anything. So you have to sit there and you have to breathe in that love and breathe in that light and you need to close your eyes. And that's what I do at least is mm-hmm. I sit there and I take with every breath, I let, allow myself to see light. You know, I, I picture that dark room and I allow like a little thing of light come through and I let light, like light take over and I let it b- go bright. And then I see myself go bright and I, I and then I start to vision who do I want to be? What do I want to be? What do I want to look like? How do I want to carry myself? Those are like the types of things that get me out of yeah. those dark places. And then it's like then it's okay, now I have to go back home. How am I going to take this battle when I get home? And that's, that's the hard part. Um, and I, I, it's hard to say, it's hard to give advice because when everyone is in their low point, you could hear all the advice in the world and it does nothing. Mm. You can see a shrink. You know, I've seen, I've seen therapists and sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't help. Yeah. I've had, I've talked to friends and it helps. It doesn't help. I think, I think alone time and I think alone time and being in nature is what will save a life to be honest and Mm -hmm. get you out of that because it's the most pure form of anything. You're not going to feel judged if you're sitting by yourself on the beach. Yeah. You don't go to go. Don't go to like Zuma or Santa Monica or, <laughs> where it's crowded with people. You know, sure. drive north on PCH until you see a spot on the it's beach empty. where there's not people. Yeah, it's not a long drive. It does. Like, okay, let's say you're in fucking. Let's say you're in Nevada. Okay, you don't have the beach, but what do you have to enjoy out there? You have the desert, and the desert could be the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful places in the world. Yeah, and it's quiet. You could sit there in the desert, and you could feel the sand, and you could just okay, like nothing's happening to me. This, it loves me. I'm not getting judged. Who's judging me, sure. but yourself. Yeah. And then why judge yourself? And I think, uh, I think for me, just being out helps every single time. And I've, I've been in and out of it. And Nature I think saves. being, yeah, every time I'm home, it's like, I don't, I do, I dread going home. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I dread it. Yeah. And uh, I like to be out. Mm hmm. And even when, even if I'm dealing with people or not, there's just something about being outside and breathing like fresh air and being able to see a mountain or a tree. Yeah. It just like, cause it's, it's so pure. Yeah. It's just love human, like humans forget how to love. Sure. And it's, uh, there's the purest, purest form, mother nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. bro. even animals, bro, almost all animals love, even the most vicious animals that people can think of is just pure love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's pure love. Like I'm telling you, I with all confidence, if I ran into, cause I did when I was in Montana, Yeah. you could ask my friend, he was cracking up 
we're sitting there. We're in our one of our we're at our campsite. We're we're in Wyoming, not Montana, mm-hmm. and we're because we're at the Grand Teton yeah. National Park, and we're camping like we're at elevation of like nine thousand feet. We're camping. Yeah. And we're sitting there and we do we're cooking up some fish and stuff, which is like, oh, it's yeah. sketch. Yeah. And he hears like he hears a bear and he's all scared. I'm like, bro, calm down. I go, the bear's not going to do anything. It just wants the food. It doesn't want to eat you. Go. I go, trust me, he tastes like shit. Right. And he's, <laughs> yeah. he's cracking up. He's like, he's like, bro. And he the bear's close. It was, it, was a, it was a black bear. Yeah. Regardless. And he was like, bro, I don't know what to do. Da, 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 da. He, and he has his like he has his he has his can of bear spray yeah. and we had like we had guns but they were in the car. He has his bear spray. And I'm like, bro, put that away. I go, the bear's gonna know. You have bear spray out. I go, they know what bear spray is. I go sit there and breathe and let him take the food. And I swear he's gonna leave. Right? So we had food on the fire, or whatever. Dude, I was not even shitting you. So we're like this. We're sitting there. I had, I had my eyes closed and I'm just breathing. Right? And yeah. He's like. He goes, Antonio, you eat too many mushrooms, bro. This shit's not, <laughs> he's like, he's like, this shit's not gonna work out. And I was like, bro, relax. I don't eat that many mushrooms. And he goes, he's sitting there, and I go, I go, don't talk, just fucking breathe, right? Yeah. And dude, the bear comes up, grabs the brown bag, the paper bag, and he walks away with our food. And it was like seasonings and shit. Like all the fish and the steaks are on the on the grill. Yeah. He grabs like the seasoning and all the stuff that's going to make the food smell good. And he's all, dude, he starts crying, bro. It was so funny. He's like, he's like, bro, like, he's like, we did it. I was like, yeah, bro. I was like, I was like, why does the bear want to hurt you? Yeah. I go, we're not threatening him right now. Yeah. I go, we just have something he wants. Yeah. And if we let him take it, that's love. I was like, it's a fair trade. That's you know what beautiful. I mean? I go, bro. I mean, obviously if you go. And you're walking the desert of Africa and a lioness sees you. <laughs> she's going to bite your neck because she's hungry, like sure. hungry, hungry. Yeah. Like, like, bro, if I was in the Arctic mm-hmm. and I was swimming and I saw a polar bear jump on a glacier. Yeah. I would lay there calmly and accept my fate because I'm dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> you know, that bear is hungry. hungry. Yeah. You know, but like this black bear wasn't hungry enough to mm-hmm. want to eat us. Yeah. And I knew that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're in the middle of Montana, bro. Yeah. Like, there's fish and there's berries all around. Like, yeah. dude, dude's eating good. Yeah. You know, you, that's a, all it is, is trusting the universe. Yeah. Go out in nature, get your love from mother nature and breathe. Yeah. Get the, out of that hole, the man. Second, dude, the second someone's in that black place. And it's so easy when you live in these cement jungles. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, if you go out and breathe and like you, you know, mm-hmm. watch some comedy or something that brings you like uplifts you. Yeah. Like you, you didn't even know comedy would do that for you. Did no, you? No. Sometimes when you're in those dark places is the best time to try new things. hundred percent. And to listen to new things. Yes, sir. You know, get out of your comfort zone at that point. That's beautiful. We'll end it right there, my friend. Yes, sir. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Antonio. Thank All you, right, sir. Thank you very much.